Act Four of Mademoiselle de Belle Isle by Alexandre Dumas, translated by Francis N. Campbell, eighteen o nine to eighteen ninety three. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four, Scene One, an apartment of state in the palace at Chantilly. Dumont, Dauvray, Chamillac, and other gentlemen at the gaming table on the right of the stage two others playing at dice on the left madame de valcourt and richelieu walking about upon my honour i don't understand this business the least in the world myself she maintained to me that she did not know what i meant with the most miraculous assurance but how did you get into the room do explain that to me excuse me that is a useful secret but you don't know the best of the story yet the man who betted against me who held the stakes the chevalier d'aubigny well was in three days to have married this very girl this gabrielle de belle isle good gracious you don't say so and how has he taken the business why i rather think heroically and tragically to the last degree no really why he has called upon me three times to-day leaving his name each time and the hour at which he called unluckily i was out hunting where by the by i have done up a capital horse but as i came home and was informed of the trouble the chevalier had taken in my behalf i returned his civility of course it was decreed however that we were not to meet for he was out when i called on him so I left my card, and wait further measures from him. And what news do you bring us from Paris, my dear Marchioness? None whatever. I hardly had time to alight before I came back again. The Duke de Bourbon arrived just in time to help the King into his carriage, and His Majesty, with more than his usual cordiality even, begged him not to be late at supper, because after supper he wished him to make one in his rubber i think really we are in higher favour than ever look sharp after our dear bishop that's all if a gust comes it will be from his quarter as for me the last time i saw him he looked so devilish sweet upon me that i've been terrified at it ever since oh, my dear duke you slander him he's a worthy man who looks with indifference on earthly greatness and only sighs for privacy and seclusion why you surely have forgotten that on the death of the regent it was he who presented the duke de bourbon to the king hmm. perhaps he thought if he presented himself the effect might not be altogether so good <laughs> i think you are mistaken for you see yourself that at the slightest difficulty or disagreement the bishop is always ready to throw up his hand and forsake the game yes and by trying that experiment twice he has ascertained beyond a doubt that his royal pupil cannot endure his absence you say he sighs for privacy and abhors power pomp and station take my word for it we shall yet live to see him cardinal and prime minister don't you think so demon my dear fellow i have the vilest hand never mind you know the saying who loses at play wins in love maybe so but in spite of the proverbs i'm unlucky every way you must not say so just now my dear duke i was coming to ask you to dance with me in the third quadrille the third that's a long way off oh i'm engaged for the two first monsieur d'auvray have the kindness to give your hand to the duke de richelieu i have a word to say to you here d'aufray give me your cards when you come back i promise you you shall find daumont beaten into good humour sits down to play with daumont d'aufray walking about with madame de valcourt i wait your commands madame presently i do not wish to be overheard the devil a secret conference cry hall to your vain imaginations for they are already on a wrong scent i assure you the matter is this if you should happen to see the chevalier d'aubigny come in 
that young lieutenant in the king's guard you know pray keep your eye upon him for i suspect something like a duel is brewing between him and monsieur de richelieu richelieu again upon my soul he gives me more trouble than the whole french nobility put together and what is this duel about i'm not quite sure but whatever its origin may be tis your duty as lieutenant of my lord's high marshals of france to prevent it sir i have warned you and your business is to be on your guard and now be so good as to take me back into the ballroom chevalier for our secret conference is ended richelieu showing a handful of money here Dauphre, i am doing a capital business for you Dauvray leading madame de valcourt into the ballroom very well go on with it exeunt i told you Daumont, you oughtn't to play against me you're sure to be beaten double the stakes with all my heart enter daubigny daubigny from the door at last comes slowly forward and stands opposite richelieu aha chevalier so there you are at last yes my lord duke can i say two words to you the moment this deal is over i am at your service i can wait that's well send me over your money Domon. thanks chamillac take my place it's a lucky one getting up now sir chamillac takes richelieu's place i waited yesterday morning in the street till four o'clock to see your grace very possibly chevalier i left the palace by the park gate i have done myself the honour of waiting upon your grace three times to-day so i was informed sir to my great regret but i presume you are aware that as soon as i return from hunting yes you were so good as to call at my lodging they bow to each other i presume my lord duke that it is unnecessary for me to state the motive of my importunity mm i rather think chevalier i have some idea of it you understand sir of course that when a man has attacked the honour of a woman whose father and brothers are prisoners in the bastille Dauvray comes in at the back and approaches them by degrees he is answerable to her lover upon my honour nothing can be more obvious my dear chevalier and i am entirely at your command i need not add that the real cause of our encounter must not be known the cause shall be the last comet or the warm weather or anything in short that may suit your fancy besides i have no doubt we shall find accommodating seconds my lord duke might it not be more accommodating to have none at all oh very well we will take a walk for instance in some place agreed upon between us i shall happen to be out at the same time and chance to ramble in the same direction so that in point of fact it will be an encounter and no duel your place sir the nearer the palace the better the avenue which leads to the wood then charming your grace's time name your own hour my dear sir nine in the morning agreed the arms it is unnecessary to specify them we are both gentlemen and a gentleman's weapon is his sword we go out as usual with our sword on and excite nobody's curiosity or interference by so doing excellent to-morrow then at nine o'clock in the avenue leading to the wood and with no weapons but our swords just so my lord duke Dauvray, touching them on the shoulder with a baton in the king's name stand you are hereby ordered to appear on the eighth day from the present before the high court of my lord's marshals of france so overheard Dauvray. the devil take you my dear fellow one really cannot have three words of comfortable difference in peace and quiet now without conjuring up you and your staff of office gentlemen both you duke and you chevalier take notice this is no jest you are officially warned and from this moment your heads are between the axe and the block how confoundedly pleasant give me therefore your word of honour 
both of you that until my lord's marshals have determined the case there shall be neither duel nor hostile encounter of any sort between you it's none of my business chevalier let monsieur d'auvigny give you his word and then you shall have mine otherwise i must inform you that i am bound to follow him if he pleases in this matter even to the scaffold my lord duke i would take your life but i would have taken it myself trials and judges are useless in our case sir the only judge between your grace and me must be god monsieur d'auvray i pledge my word to you that neither duel nor encounter shall take place between you upon the honour of a gentleman upon the honour of a peer very good gentlemen of course i rely upon your word goes and looks over the card players servant entering a courier at this moment arrived from paris desires to speak with the duke de Mont immediately on his majesty's business de Mont getting up gentlemen will you excuse me the king's service first my lord duke exit de Mont, following the footman really chevalier i am in despair about this balk console yourself my lord duke i hope to find a remedy for it yet of course you are aware that the matter could not blow over thus and that i should not have given my word so easily unless i had found a better way of ending the whole business and did your grace really suppose that so short and easy an explanation had already satisfied me if so sir you have done me yet another injury to tell you the truth chevalier i was a little surprised at the readiness with which you acceded to monsieur d'auvray's proposal i should think your grace might have understood it however the cause of our duel my lord cannot be dragged before a tribunal mademoiselle de belle is already dishonoured enough without the public disgrace of such discussions but believe me my lord duke there are other ways of settling this quarrel permit me to remind you sir that you have given your word of honour not to fight your grace that's all but the man who means to be revenged of an insult the man who has lost peace happiness everything in this life the man who has sworn to kill his enemy or be killed by him that man my lord duke for one means that fails him has a thousand others ready at his hand all that he asks is to find an adversary brave and loyal enough to allow that to the man whom he has robbed of every hope he has no right to refuse any satisfaction i flatter myself sir that you will find in me precisely such an adversary and therefore i gave my word for i reckoned upon your grace's courage you were quite right my dear sir and the devil take me if i back out from anything you propose very good sir here are dice he that has the worst of three throws what then it's like a game at forfeits shall blow his brains out my lord duke that's a kind of duel my lord's marshals take no cognizance of ha 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 my soul do you know that's a most ingenious contrivance of yours you hesitate sir my dear fellow it's the funniest notion i have ever heard of in all my life your grace refuses then no 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 not precisely have a care my lord duke this is the second time that it has happened to your grace what sir to be arrested in the most convenient manner at the moment of receiving a challenge well sir so that it might be almost supposed that monsieur d'auvray was in the secret beforehand oh that won't be supposed now for i accept the challenge well said my lord duke i looked for nothing less from you only my good friend i must beg for six hours reprieve after the game because you see if one doesn't happen to be a bastard one has always a little business to attend to in such cases before one six hours so be it they sit down to the dice charmed to have a thrill with you o oh lord what you're dicing together now yes d'auvray have you a mind to go half in my stake yes but where's your money we are playing on parole 
begin my lord duke no excuse me do you begin shamiak i bet fifty louis upon richelieu very good i'll take you come gentlemen since your grace insists upon it froze five richelieu froze eight come come i want my revenge are they going on with it yes it's you to begin my lord duke i hope my beginning will bring you luck this time throws nine daubigny to chamillac you have no chance monsieur de chamillac i am sorry you bet it on my side throws eleven that's better quits d'aubray do you mean to go on monsieur daubigny certainly sir the same bet chamillac seven seven nothing shall we stop now chevalier this is my answer nine eleven daubigny rising my lord duke you have won there are your fifty louis d'aubray chevalier i do hope you are not in earnest and how dare you suppose any such thing sir because the thing's impossible if it had been impossible sir your grace would not have agreed to it yes but if i had lost if you had lost my lord duke you would have kept your word as i shall keep mine for god's sake it is just morning three o'clock at nine your grace i shall pay you exit richelieu following him sir sir you will do no such thing or you are stark staring mad the rest of the characters go off gradually into the ballroom richelieu remains in front of the stage walking about in great agitation he'll do it oh he'll do it as he says it there are certain men one need only look at once to know what stuff they are made of is there no way to prevent this horrid absurdity to think that he'll go quietly home to his lodgings and there alone and in cold blood gad's life it's worse than a murder youth courage my fine name and in six hours to have his brains blown out by a pistol shot and all oh, for that infernal wager of mine that i wish to god i'd lost a hundred times over more particularly as the devil take me if i know in the least how i won it after all if that fellow shoots himself he'll haunt me all my life if i was only at paris i might get a letter to cachet and clap him into the bastille he would be safe enough there unless he hung himself up to the window bars but here there's nothing to be done upon my soul i shall go distracted Dumont coming down and upon my soul i shall go distracted you what about why about what's happening to me is something happening to you too why you seem quite upset agitated my dear fellow what's the matter have you heard the news from paris no complete change of ministry the bishop of Frejou at the head of the cabinet the bishop the bishop ah there 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 i said so I told the marchioness so not half an hour ago and she pooh-poohed at it in the grandest style what becomes of monsieur de bourbon arrested arrested a prince of the blood royal arrested nevertheless but this is not all what something else i have received a letter from the king ordering the marchioness to her estate there to remain banished in fact till further notice why do they write that to you because as captain of the king's guard i am to have the honour of escorting her thither oh lord poor damon what wilt thou do i must do as i am commanded i take it is any delay granted not a minute the express is not to return to paris till he has seen us off here damon 
here comes the marchioness to fetch you to dance with her i wish i was a hundred feet underground madame de valcourt entering what are you about daumont i am waiting for you poor fellow the question is not what he is doing but what he will do for i assure your ladyship his mind is by no means made up what do you mean madam pray forgive me i am most unfortunate i am in despair bless us what's the matter with you my dear marchioness let what will happen depend upon me as your devoted friend and use all my influence and interest if however they are not going to the devil with your own my influence lost my interest what are you both talking about are you both mad madam the king may not be disobeyed who thinks of disobeying his majesty why he does Delmont does if he only knew how but he is compelled to execute the orders he has just received from court and what are they for heaven's sake duke speak do not alarm yourself madam this loss of favour is probably only temporary loss of favour you will be the death of me both of you with your preparations come i'm no coward speak out at once do and let me know what is the matter enter chevalier d'auvray d'auvray to richelieu i beg your pardon my dear duke but i must trouble you for your sword hallo d'auvray showing a letter the king's sign manual prisoner you must go immediately to paris to give an account of yourself to the new powers that be oh for pity's sake will nobody have the charity to tell me what all this means why my dear marchioness it means that you are pious humble self-denying meek and all unworldly bishop is at the head of the government that daumont is at this moment in his pocket in order to escort you into banishment and that the duc de bourbon is arrested good god my uncle your uncle your uncle your uncle oh gentlemen for heaven's sake lose no time in useless exclamations what is to be done but can't i see my uncle of what use for that since he is arrested if i wrote to the king your letter will be read by the bishop to the queen that indeed oh yes she surely cannot have forgotten that i was the means of bringing her out of banishment to place her on the foremost throne of europe but who on earth will give my letter to her i will my dear marchioness depend upon me oh your grace stands by me in my need Dumont, give me that pen and ink my head spins round i scarce know what i am writing writes the dancers gradually return richelieu snatching the paper from her stop 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 a bit is this your handwriting madam did not you see me write it what do you mean what do i mean why that if this is your handwriting madam this note and this petition are your handwriting also and not mademoiselle de belle's and if so who was it that received me last night in her chamber where i thought she was sir nay madam the truth the truth lives as well as fortunes are in every minute that we waste now who was in that room last night madame de valcourt rising myself you your grace's humble servant and your wife his wife his wife my wife your wife then i've lost my wager that mademoiselle de belle was not in the room then d'aubigny need not blow his brains out <sighs> my dear dear madam pray excuse me but indeed i am so overjoyed at having lost that cursed wager that i protest i am not half as much shocked by this news as might have been expected Daumont, Doré, I owe you each five hundred louis. 
for god madam i am more obliged to your ladyship for being my wife than words can express hmm. but come 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 let us waste no time in useless exclamations since you are my wife madam give me your hand and to paris instantly to throw ourselves at the king's feet for unless i can be back here in less than six hours the bravest young fellow in france will have blown his brains out good god what do you mean excellent company strange accidents you see have occurred to us some of us have fallen into disgrace and some into matrimony tis little more than three in the morning yet i shall be back here in six hours if horses legs may do it and hope to find the ballroom not yet empty and the supper room still full come come madam my dear marchioness duchess i mean reserve all further particulars for the road for i tell you if that young man's death is to lie at my door i will never forgive you or myself or any human being that has been concerned in so terrible a jest end of the fourth act act five of mademoiselle de belle isle by alexandre dumas translated by francis n campbell eighteen o nine to eighteen ninety three this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org act five scene one mademoiselle de belle isle's room mademoiselle de belle isle and a footman you are sure you remember who i mean monsieur d'aubigny the young officer who called here yesterday and the day before i know perfectly who you mean madam mademoiselle de belle isle sealing a letter well you must find him immediately it is quite early yet hardly seven o'clock he will certainly not have left his lodging give him this note and bring him with you hither directly i must speak to him immediately before you go send mariette to me mariette left the palace last night with her ladyship the marchioness left the palace you say last night madam her ladyship went away with the duc de richelieu before the ball was over but she will come back she is coming back to-day i do not know madam but if you please i can inquire yes pray do but first of all take that letter for it is immediate exit servant what can be happening yesterday she sent me word that she could not receive me this morning she has left the palace not a word from daubigny i cannot conceive what is going on daubigny in the ante-room can i see mademoiselle de belle isle oh yes henry come in come in i had just written to you i was expecting you every moment and yet almost feared that you would not come it is an unforeseen circumstance indeed that brings me no matter what you are most welcome oh i am so glad to see you again i have come to ask a service of you a service of me oh speak gabrielle i have no one in the world but you my mother died in giving me birth my father fell at the battle of denain i have no relations no friends no friends i do not know therefore to whom i can confide a trust of some importance unless you will take charge of it for me what trust papers that concern my fortune and estate and why do you not keep them in your own possession because i am going away gabrielle away yes i am going to leave you and when absence once begins god alone can tell how long it lasts henry i do not wish to alarm you but who can foresee what time may have in store for him assuredly had any one foretold me of the events of the last three days i had not credited them but i must endeavour to be no more surprised by misfortune i shall not therefore escape from it i know but it shall henceforth find me prepared for it expecting it i have not interrupted you henry though every word you have uttered has been a dagger to my heart go on then since you do not fear to wound me go on i listen to you most attentively oh believe me it costs me much to give you a moment's pain but what i have to say is most important and once said it will be said for ever go on the hour of parting has brought with it solemn thoughts of the countless chances of this weary life perhaps perhaps i shall see you no more again 
and I cannot leave you without entreating your forgiveness for my intemperate anger yesterday. Alas, one cannot calmly tear from one's heart a hope that had been its life's blood for four years, for I have loved you thus long, longer, longer. I cannot remember when I loved you not, but I have feared that if I did not return, if, if, in short, if I were to die without seeing you once again, you might imagine that I had died with a heart embittered against you, and this might have caused you anguish and remorse. Therefore, Gabrielle, I am come to bid you farewell, no longer, alas, as a lover leaving his betrothed, but as a brother parting from a sister. Oh, you are pitiless, pitiless, and you will surely rue one day the torture you are inflicting on me now. And yet, tis but the desire that your happiness, if you can yet be happy, may not be disturbed by thoughts of my despair that prompts me at this moment. Had it been better to leave you in the belief that I hated and cursed you, when in truth I had forgiven you? Forgiven me? Yes, forgiven you. And it is but very lately that my heart has found the strength to do so, but heaven has taken pity on me. The best part of this night I have passed within the sacred walls of a church, for we may, and alas, do forget God in our senseless hours of joy and happy hope. But when joy and happiness are torn from us forever, God still remains to us. And then, yes, then, we remember him. We seek him. I had forgotten him, for my heart was filled with but one thought, and that was you. You. But last night, in the bitter anguish of my soul, I thought on him, or rather, he mercifully thought on me. I spent two hours prostrate before the altar, weeping and praying. O oh, Gabrielle, Gabrielle, God grant that you may never feel such desperate need of prayers, of tears, and of his holy sanctuary. He is mad. No, no longer mad. I was mad, but I have recovered my senses. For from that church I turned home, calm and resigned at least, if not consoled. Since then I have put all in order for my departure, and I have come to confide these papers to you. If I return, you shall give them back to me. If I do not return, then open them, and let me beseech you to fulfill the last entreaties that you will find in them. And now, farewell, Gabrielle. Good heavens! Where is Madame de Valcourt? Will you not say farewell, Gabrielle? Henry, you shall not leave me. I must. Because you believe me guilty. But listen, listen, I swear to you by my mother's soul, by my father's promised freedom, by your life, oh dearer a thousand times than my own, that I am innocent. I have heard those oaths before, and remember too, I heard the Duke. You heard him. Well, in spite of his assurance, which surpassed belief, twas false, all false. He either lied with wicked and determined purpose, or, like myself, was dupe of some infamous stratagem. Oh, hear me, Henry. Well? Heaven forgive me. I am committing a sin in speaking this, for I have sworn. But, but, that night, when Monsieur de Richelieu maintains that I received him here, I was not in the palace. You were not in the palace? No. I left it at ten o'clock that night, and only returned to it at five the next morning. But, in the name of heaven, where were you then? That Madame de Valcourt alone can authorize me to reveal. I have already broken half my solemn promise in telling you thus much. Remember that. Have mercy on me, Henry, and urge me no further now, for I have suffered such anguish since yesterday that only to keep you here I might be tempted to utter all in spite of a most sacred oath. Absent from the palace the whole night! Good God! I have said it. Now grant me but this. And if the expectation I hold out to you prove false, then Henry kill me. Or worse, worse a thousand times, forsake and despise me forever. Wait. Only wait till I can bring you to Madame de Valcourt, and at her feet I will implore her to tell you all, and free me from these dreadful suspicions. Madame de Valcourt? Madame de Valcourt, you know that you will not see her again, that she is gone beyond your reach. How? Madame de Valcourt is gone. Gone? banished to her estate banished 
the duc de bourbon has involved her in his ruin but why do i dwell on these circumstances which must be as well known to you as to myself the duc de bourbon is no longer prime minister no gabrielle and your father is free the duc de bourbon is no longer minister he resigned yesterday at noon true true is it true henry speak speak what matters it answer me i say upon your sacred honour is it true that the duc de bourbon is no longer minister it is true then i may tell you all then i am freed from my oath then 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 oh henry we are saved that night oh heaven be praised oh heaven be thanked we are delivered i cannot speak i am choking good heavens speak speak for pity's sake that night by favour of an order from madame de valcourt and in her carriage i left the palace that night in which unfortunate thou believedst i had deceived thy love and blasted all our hopes that night i passed in my father's arms my father whom i had not seen for three wretched years of dreary imprisonment if you doubt me henry he he my father himself shall swear to you on his white hairs that i speak the truth be silent oh be silent this was the cause of my confusion this was why for the first the only time in my life i urged you to leave me without being able to assign the real motive for my doing so i had sworn to the marchioness who gave me that order unknown to monsieur de bourbon that as long as he continued minister i would keep that secret which once known might have caused her ruin and the death of my father ten minutes after you had left my room i was gone from it and had but just returned to it when you came the next morning now 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 tis you who are the guilty one and i the judge for remember oh remember what withering words you have uttered to me to your own gabrielle oh when you had left me in scorn and dreadful anger when i found myself alone far from my father and forsaken by you i thought god had forsaken me too and that i had nothing left but to die gabrielle gabrielle yes to die for since all means of justifying myself seemed denied to me while living perhaps you would have believed my death then henry you would have said since she has died because i left her she loved me and if she loved me she could not thus deceive me now 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 will you forgive me or shall i forgive you oh no no neither let us forget the bitter past the future is all our own the future in two blessed words i love you dearest do you love me still hush hush and yet tell me for my benumbed senses seem rushing back suddenly to life since you were not here since you were at paris every word that villain uttered was false he lied that duke that base that infamous traducer looks at the clock oh god but half an hour to find him and tear his heart out half an hour one short half hour rushes to the door she stops him henry what means this i stand here before you i tell you that i am innocent i prove it to you i tell you again that i love you oh most dearly and instead of answering me of thinking of me you speak of nothing but that man forget his folly and despise his calumnies let us think now of nothing but my father's restored liberty let us return home again to brittany to happiness happiness gabrielle happiness oh it is now your turn to hear a fatal secret what good heavens no no leave me let me go let me go let me find him i will find him before my time expires henry you shall not leave this room i know not what you mean or what you seek to do but you shall only cross the threshold of this door over my body and if you attempt to force me from it i will raise the house with cries for help to die now thus at such a moment assassinated by that villain impossible what horrible words are those oh gabrielle come to my arms once more once more for the last last time lay that dear head upon my heart so now tell me again again thou lovest me angel repeat it to me in this moment of despair dolt idiot that i was to doubt thee i should have doubted myself my eyes everything but thee but stung with the thought of thy treachery racked with the bitter thought of having thee torn from me i became mad alas if thou hadst believed me perjured and forsworn thou wouldst have died forgiving me because thou art a woman 
an angel of pity and forgiveness but i hungered for vengeance i thirsted for thy betrayer's blood i ought not perhaps to tell thee this dreadful thing but all strength and self-command have left me i met him challenged him we were to fight heavens we were arrested we passed our word of honour not to fight no means remained of encountering him but dragging before a tribunal the cause of our quarrel that cause was thy dishonour gabrielle thou wert lost or my injury unrequited then then dice lay at hand the devil prompted me and i challenged him to play his life against mine at hazard he accepted for he is brave we threw and i lost ah now i see it all your return hither was but to leave me forever that absence was death you were to die for me for me oh but you forget i am not guilty you wanted to die because you thought me guilty you know now i am not guilty i love you still i have loved you ever die die you die oh my god my god that fatal man why why did he ever cross my path do you not see that i must murder him you shall not leave me henry i will cling to you you shall not move and yet there is no other way if he were dead no human being knows of what passed between us none know that this very day this very hour in a few short minutes i had sworn to blow my brains out oh gabrielle help me help me see whither my love for thee has led me i speak the words of baseness i think the thoughts of cowardice see see how i love thee since i can contemplate dishonour rather than thy loss love yes thou hast love but no pity unclasp thy arms not on thy heart but at thy feet is now my place oh wert thou thus in anguish to cast thyself down before me fame honour life all all would be thine whilst thou canst see me thus embrace thy feet and give but half thy soul to love the rest to pride and vengeance how can i help thee let me go to that wicked cruel man i will implore him to spare thee to spare us both oh henry my heart is bursting my senses are forsaking me have mercy on me henry mercy mercy courage beloved one oh heaven you tear my heart-strings courage to see thee die never never but to die with thee yes now this instant since it must be so at least at least together hush hush listen tis his voice tis the voice of the duke great god be thanked thy justice leads him hither now gabrielle now do for me to-day what i did yesterday for you in into that room no no i will not leave you then by heaven i will murder him at your feet i will go henry i will but in the name of heaven go 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 and leave me quick mademoiselle de belle goes into the room richelieu outside go to the devil fellow i tell you he is here and i must and will speak to him rushes in daubigny seizes him at length you are in my grasp and you in mine and a pretty fright i have had of it lest i should come too late my lord duke you have lied my dear friend i know it and i have galloped thirty miles without drawing rein to tell you so and i would have told you so six hours ago but that i was arrested and carried to paris where fortunately a justification of three words satisfied his majesty and thank god i do not arrive too late what is the meaning sir mademoiselle de belle comes forward the meaning sir is this that if you do not receive my heartfelt apologies if you will not and cannot forgive me i never will forgive myself for this most painful affair i have been all along the dupe of this strangest accident believing most firmly myself what i asserted at the same time that it was utterly false the cause of this strange mistake and herself the most innocent accomplice of my delusion is here my wife madame de richelieu enter madame de valcourt and the abbe i acknowledge sir that mademoiselle de belle is the purest angel that ever trod this earth in the shape of woman 
and I entreat permission to throw myself at her feet and implore her pardon, for I have insulted her most grossly and most undeservedly. And I repent having done so, as a man should repent an unworthy and shameful action. Are you satisfied, Chevalier? Is there yet any further reparation that I can make? Enough. Enough, my lord duke. You have a noble heart, sir, and you have proved it nobly. Oh, madame. My dear Chevalier, when I tell you that I was in your Gabrielle's chamber during her absence at Paris, this fatal mystery will all be solved. Oh, heaven be praised for this respite from despair. My lord duke, your hand. You are a brave and honorable man. Halt, my dear fellow. It's evident you don't count modesty among my virtues, and yet I have, a little. But here is the beacon, whose light shall henceforth point to every virtue that is wanting in my list. Your Grace's Reformation? Is a miracle, my dear Abbe. But it was wrought by two, and here they are, the paragon of maids and wives. And now, have all prepared in the chapel, without loss of time, for the solemnization of these two happy marriages. Two? Yes, madam, if you please. My own unworthiness has divorced me from you hitherto, far more effectually than death ever could have done. The presumptuous folly of my youth rejected you in a treasure, of which my riper judgment owns the worth. Our former union was devised by others, and suggested by expediency. Our present one is chosen by ourselves, and on one side at least prompted by love, esteem, and admiration. Oh, my dear, dear Abbe, am I not well rewarded? And as for your grace's sentiments, I am willing to believe they make up in vivacity what they want in duration. Now, as for me, my dear Duke, since we are come to the closing chapter of Confessions, though i may have felt little admiration and less esteem for your conduct during some periods of my acquaintance with you i have loved you with the most persevering patience every minute of the last six years so now to marry and then to brittany where mademoiselle your father whom the change of ministry has liberated will meet you and should the time which must elapse before you are again in his arms prove tedious we will enliven it by carefully elucidating all the obscure effects relative to the duke's wager end of act five end of mademoiselle de belle by alexandre dumas translated by francis n campbell eighteen o nine to eighteen ninety three